Hello YouTube, welcome to this, the 13th video on the Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild. In this video, I get all the fluids in the engine, I prime it with oil, and I get it started, or more specifically, Mrs. Laws starts it. She turns the key. You'll notice this is the 13th video. I wonder if that's just a coincidence. Well, you'll see at the end of this video. That's it, folks. It's all back together now. For the purposes of uh, keeping an eye on everything, I'll leave the bonnet off uh, for now. You can see the lights on the grill. Maybe you can't. The lights on the grill are still missing, uh, as there's a fan that needs to go in here. Uh, so I've ordered some Araldite to repair the fan. Um, some of the magnets have come loose within the housing, so I'm going to Araldite them all back in. Uh, and then I can put it back in. It's just the air conditioning fan. Finally got the arrow light in the post. So inside this, there was a, two of the magnets had fallen off. One of them was disintegrating and jamming up the fan. So I've glued the magnets back in, uh, what remained of one of them. Cleaned the commutator up and uh, fitted it all back together. And it runs really nicely now. So that's ready to go. I can put the front of the car on it. I've left this hose clamp off. I'm going to pull that hose off uh, to bleed. That's the highest point in the coolant circuit. Uh, and there's another high point here, so that one already has a bleed. This one does not, so this is the hose to the LPG reducer and to the um, heater matrix. So I'm going to bleed that one, probably while it's running, and that one. I'll try them both while I'm filling it up, try them again when I'm running it. So the next thing is, oh sorry, I haven't finished that one yet, that hose needs to go on there as well. I'm going to fill it up with oil, I'm going to leave the LPG ECU disconnected, so that intercepts the signal to the petrol injectors, so it won't fire up basically. Uh, or it won't even try and fire up. The plugs are out, so I'm going to spin it for a period of time. I've already done this on the work uh, on the engine stand, um, just to prime it with oil again. The radiator is empty. I've got this high zinc content oil to go in now for the first uh, few hours of driving. So I'm going to prime it with the plugs out, and then I'm going to put this on, fill up the coolant, uh, put the spark plugs in and the leads on, and then um, that's it then, start it up. Oh, and some power steering fluid. And then it'll be a case of running it for a while. I'm going to put something in here, a little bit of wood or something to hold the throttle open, uh, have it at 2,500 revs. I'm going to monitor the temperature like mad uh, on the OBD reader. Well, um, yeah, get it up to temperature, check it stays at temperature, check the thermostat opens and it steadies off. Uh, and then after that, the next time I run it, really needs to be on the road at some, uh, under some load. All under the advice of my good friend Tom. Alright, time to spin it over. I've already done this on the stand with this battery, so hopefully it'll it'll spin for a bit. Uh, all this ignition time gives it a little um, time to put some fuel in the fuel rail as well. I don't know why, but this uh, particular model of Land Rover doesn't have a return line, so uh, I don't know how they work all the bubbles out, but the fuel rail's reasonably empty. So um, I assume it'll fill with fuel and the, fuel, the air bubble will get smaller under the pressure, I guess around four times smaller depending on fuel pressure, but anyway, it gives it a chance to fill that. The injectors won't be firing because the LPG ECU is disconnected. The spike plugs are out, so it should just spin nice and quick, and I want to see that engine oil light go out. I've seen it on the stand, I know it works, I'm just priming it again basically, so I'll give it a 30 seconds or something. Right, the audio went wrong in this little bit of a clip, I'm afraid. So, spinning the engine over went well. It took a long time, it was like 30, well, maybe 40 seconds or something to get the oil pressure through, but eventually got there. Um, I got a whiff of burning wires because I've missed the large earth connection off the engine. So it all went through a tiny earth connection, um, but it, it survived, <laughs> so that's good. And um, the next thing I said here is, I think I'm gonna, oh, here we go, the whiff of electricity from there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna um, fill up the coolant. Uh, yeah, nearly there. Uh, 
Looks like I was putting spark plugs back in at this point, not actually filling the coolant at all. So there's eight of them to go, and then the leads, uh, all a bit of a faff, especially on that side with the LPG reducer in the way. There's no space on that side of the engine. Uh, closer to the camera, there's quite a bit of space, luckily. Uh, and then I think I eventually get round to putting the coolant in here. It's ready to start. My nerves have been building for some time. Uh, this happens every time I do a big job on a car. I sort of, I start milling around looking for other things to do, <laughs> reasons to delay it, worrying it's going to explode in my face. And, who knows? I'm just going to tidy up a few tools, <laughs> and then we'll start it up. <laughs> we'll, we'll try and start it up. <laughs> Oh, just get on with it! Right, I've delayed as long as I can. We've got to start this engine. Mrs. Laws is in the car, she's going to turn the key and tell me when I'm around about 2,500 revs. My good friend Tom has told me to leave it there for some time. Uh, I'm going to watch on the OBD read here, uh, the temperature of the engine, make sure it stabilises. There's a viscous fan, it should stay at a sensible temperature, I think. Uh, check the new thermostat's working. I've got an infrared thermometer, I can check a few other bits and pieces. I don't think we can delay any longer. <laughs> Let's start it up. it is it's run there was a horrendous sound you I'm sure you heard it and you could see me looking down in that direction that was the power steering pump I had it apart I cleaned it I put it back together with a new gasket and uh, it was empty of fluid I filled the reservoir up but it wasn't enough it was just uh, sending a lot of air around with it so after a little top-up uh, that noise went away which was nice I would love to say that was it for teething issues but when I'd run the engine for a long period of time, high revs, I mean, it was about 15 minutes maybe, I let it idle before switching it off, and this is what happened. Followed by my reaction to it on, you know, immediately afterwards, I filmed this little clip after I shut the engine down.
Um, it's not exactly running beautifully, I have to say. I mean, it's not missing a beat or anything, but there is a little bit of a tapping sound from uh, the well, this side of the engine, the driver's side, the right-hand side. Uh, hydraulic tappets, maybe. God knows. It needs a good long run now and a, a fairly hard drive, really. Uh, and then that would be sort of job done. So I'll do that and see if that clears up. It does very much sound like a tappet. It sounds like the top end. Um, it sounds like you know, a rocker or something. Mm. We shall see. It's a drive next. Ladies and gents, I'm going to leave it there. That is the 13th video of the Land Rover Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild series. That was the 8th of December. We are now in February. <laughs> Most of the time in between has been filled trying to figure out what that bloody noise is. It's been... Uh, I mean, God, so much money and so much hard work has gone into this engine. Within the constraints of something of a budget, I've been as meticulous as I could. There'll be more videos to follow, I'm trying to figure this out. Thanks for tuning in, folks. I really hope you're enjoying this series. Unfortunately, there is more to come. <laughs>